Hello friends and welcome back to Pages and Pens. My name is Julie and today I am here with my May TBR. Let's jump right into it. First of all, I don't know about you, but my months, my days, my years, my, it's been a couple years, right? We've all been inside for a couple years now. That's right. That sounds right. Feels right. <laughs> Um, I'm here with my May TBR with the caveat that this is very fluid. I don't know that I read really anything from my TBR for April. Um, some things just weren't working. I'm on this thriller train still. I know I'm waiting for it to end too, but it hasn't. So at some point I might jump off, but that time has not come yet. So I have a TBR here of a couple different books. I'm going to share with you and then hopefully I get some of these read this month but really who knows. All right so first up I'm going to get the like dull book out of the way. I'm going to be trying to read Making a Good Script Great by Linda Seeger. Seger? I'm not really sure. This is going to be my craft book for the month. I've been trying to do or had been trying to do a book a week on craft and I just burnt myself out and then I also had signed up for master classes like online classes taught by pros. I'm sure you've seen the ads. Everybody's getting them right now as we're at home. And I, I think there's like 12 or 13 different authors on there. So I've been taking different writing master classes. I'm burning out on information. So I'm going to read this one for the month and then continue my master classes. But this is going to be like my craft writing book for the month. Hopefully that one goes well. Then uh, let's get into some of the arcs that I'm going to be trying to get to. I want to read Q by, oh gosh, who is this by? Dalcher. Christina Dalcher. Dalcher. When I hauled this, I said that it was a sequel to Vox. It's not. They're separate and different novels. But I have read Vox now at this point. Spoiler for my April wrap up. And I want to read Q. This one came out in April. So it's technically an arc, but um, it's out, I'm assuming now. So I want to read this one. Very excited about it because I did enjoy Vox. So hopefully that one goes well. And then I have one that already has a bookmark in it. This is The Ancestor by Danielle Trussoni, who was one of the panelists on, on Social Distance Book Fest. She was on one of the panels. And um, I'm interested. I got 57 pages in, which is like my DNF mark, apparently. Like anywhere between like 50 and 80. And I like start putting them down. I don't want to necessarily DNF it. I want to know what the big bad is. I want to know what's really happening in this story. And I picked it up and put it down. But I want to, to try it again. I'm going to try it again and decide this time for like certain if it's a hard DNF or if I'm going to finish it. I just don't know right now which way I'm going to go. But I will be trying this one again. In the same vein, I want to try um, The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. This one I started, I got 79 pages in and put it down. Not because I wasn't enjoying it, I just wasn't in the mood for this. So I'm going to come back to this one and hopefully finish it. Like I have a couple books that I'm in the middle of that I put down that I was like, I don't hate it, but I'm just not going to read it right now. I want to go back and revisit them and hopefully be able to read them because I was enjoying it. So hopefully I can read that one. Then I will be reading this lovely novel. This is Karen Slaughter's The Silent Wife, which is one of a series, but is able to be read as a standalone, per the publicist that reached out to me and asked if I wanted the arc. And I said yes, because your girl's a thriller fan now, and I wanted to read it. So I've read The Good Perfect Daughter, The Good Girls, The Perfect Something, Pretty Girls, Pretty, yeah, maybe, I think Pretty Girls. I haven't read a ton of Slaughter, so I'm excited to read this one. This one is um, All He Ever Wanted with Someone to Love. He watches, he waits, he takes. Who will be his next silent wife? It sounds terrifying. And also, this poor woman's covers. It's just not a great cover. But I am excited for this one. Um, we'll see. This one comes out in July. I got plenty of time, but again... I'm living that thriller life and I'm just going to read through them. Then we have some um, backlist that are on my shelves that I want to get to. So first up is going to be Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I know this is pretty divisive. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I like E. Lockhart's writing style and it's short and I've been told it's thrillery. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a go. It's been on a lot of TBRs and I've never gotten to it. So I want to get to this one and hopefully I enjoy it. 
Then another one that I think people had very mixed reviews on. Uh, some people really loved it, some people really hated it, and that is The Arrangement by Robin Harding. I know this doesn't have like the best views of sex workers, I don't think, and there was other some like some other things that people didn't like about it. I know Chelsea from Chelsea Darling Reads read it and really didn't like it, but I'm curious, and again, I'm like reading all thrillers right now, which I feel like is a good time to compare other thrillers because I'm like so deep into all of them that I can really kind of like pick them apart a little bit better right now. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do it. This one is about a sugar baby who falls in love with her sugar daddy, but like sugar daddy don't want her anymore because he's married. I never got to Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts this month in April and I still wanna really get to it. So this one has been listed as fantasy, but also thriller and mystery. So I'm hoping it kind of bridges that line and I'm, thinking maybe it'll like transition me into like a little bit more of a fantasy <laughs> out of thriller a little bit maybe like paranormal thriller uh, paranormal mystery I don't know like if I can transition I'm not I don't hate thrillers I just need to diversify a little bit for my own sake so I don't burn out so I'm hoping this will be like a transitional book for me we'll find out I suppose Lastly on my official TBR is Distress Signals by Katherine Ryan Howard. I read Rewind by Katherine Ryan Howard in April, which you'll see in my wrap up. It was one of my arcs from BEA that I never got to and I really, really enjoyed it. So I bought her other books, this and The Liar's Girl, and I'm in the middle of reading that right now. And then this is her first novel and it's set, it's like a mystery on a cruise ship. I don't really know, but I've really been enjoying her writing. Specifically, she really writes, she writes very smart. She has very interesting chapter breakdowns in terms of like using them to distinguish timelines. And she does multiple different kinds of like POVs, like first person, third person, like she mixes everything in there a little bit. It's super creepy. And I love the way that she navigates her twists and her like plot devices so smart. So I've been loving her books. Kind of broke my my low buy to be able to purchase her backlist books and I purchased them through Amazon but I purchased them from thrift books and I purchased them from like Goodwill type places and like smaller bookshops um, because they're just not easy to find. This was like a discarded library book. They weren't easy to find at like indie bookstores so I picked them up from like used bookstores through Amazon. It was the best I could do. So that is, again, another very thriller heavy TBR for May and we'll see what I actually get to. I did not get to um, Symbiote. I did not get to this cruel design like my uh, sci-fi dystopian kind of pandemic-y books. Wasn't feeling it. Right now, I'm still working on my books. I'm actively working on my books constantly right now. And so if I'm going to be balancing work, work on my book, and also reading. I don't want to force books that I'm not interested in. So these are the books that I'm interested in right now. I'm going to ride this train. If you are into thrillers, I'd love to know your faves so I can pick up some more. That's going to be it for this particular TBR. It's a really short one, guys. Short video, but I'm really stoked on all these books. Hopefully they are some five-star reads and a lot better than that YA thriller vlog, which I will have linked. I won't link it. I'll say I'll link it. I'll forget to link it, but that's that. So that is my May TBR. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Click subscribe and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.